Thank you. Hi, Tracy Carp with Intermediate Accounting One with Michelle McNeil Brown, um, reporting on charter communications. I selected charter communications because I was contemplating uh, cutting the cord for our cable system through Spectrum, um, who is a subsidiary of charter communications. And I was wondering if there was an impact um, with other people and the number of people that were um, deciding to cut the cord. Uh, researching the company, I re found out that charter communications was founded in 1999 and is stationed out of uh, Sanford, Connecticut. Stanford, Connecticut. Um, they can provide communication services through subsidiaries, again, like S Spectrum. Um, and in the end of December of 2018, they were serving approximately 28.1 million residents and businesses alike um, and employing over 98,000 people. Um, Charter is audited by KPMG LLP out of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, KPMG has been auditing Charter's accounts since 2002. And the finding at the end of the financial year 2018 is that their opinion from KPMG is that there was a fair representation of the financial position of the company and it conformed to the U.S. GAAP. Um, something that I found very interesting was it wasn't enough just to read the financial statement and make comparisons from one year over the, the other. Um, it was very important to read through some of the notes at the bottom for the explanations. Uh, for example, 2017 um, looked like a banner year, and then 2018, it looks like they really struggled quite a bit. Um, what I found out by reading through the notes is that part of uh, President Trump's tax reform 2017 uh, made it look like, because they were the company was able to take a $93 million adjustment, made it look like the company had, the company had done amazingly well in 2017. Uh, the problem was is that they didn't benefit from that tax reform in 2018. Um, I did a couple of ratios um, as we were requested in task one. Uh, one of the ratios that I did was the acid test ratio, um, which is the the company's ability to use liquid assets to pay short-term debt. And I was very surprised that Charter pulls in at 0.188. Um, when I looked up what an average um, acid test ratio should be, it was between two to three. Um, with Charter being as low as it was, I was very concerned that this company was in, in danger. Um, so I decided to do some comparisons. I also pulled the acid test for Comcast and DirecTV, um, direct competitors of Spectrum and Charter Communications. I was very surprised to find out that um, Comcast uh, has an acid test ratio of 0.3237 and DirecTV is at 0.4917. So all three are substantially lower than the um, what is average for an industry standard. Um, I found it very interesting. Comcast, or I'm sorry, Charter Communications is definitely the lowest of the three, um, but none of them have a great ratio for that. Uh, something else that I was looking into was the debt to equity. Um, Charter Communications comes in for at 2.3, which means for every dollar of debt, they owe their shareholders 2.3. It shows to me that they borrowed a lot of money to finance their operations. Um, Comcast is at 0.22, and DirecTV is at 1.7432. The immediate thought is, oh, Comcast is doing amazing. They're only at 0.22. Thinking on it further, it kind of makes you wonder if it indicates that maybe management isn't taking the chances that they should be to expand and improve their company. Um, so it still leaves a little bit of doubt as to the... Um, positive attributes, uh, attributes of Comcast in comparison. Um, so I'm, I'm very concerned. If I have $10,000 to invest, I'm looking at these ratios and I'm thinking that Charter Communications looks to be a bad investment. However, there seems to be a different picture forming in 2019. Uh, first and foremost, as I mentioned earlier, the fact that the tax reform of 2017 
greatly impacted the financials uh, represented in 2018, um, things are starting to level out in 2019. Um, cord cutters is definitely an issue that they are contending with. However, the financials don't reflect that, that specifically. Um, part of that is because one of the things that Charter Communications has been able to do is they have been able to evolve. Um, they moved from strictly communications to now they are providing mobile service, Spectrum Mobile being their newest platform. Um, so by evolving, they've been able to stay with the trends and sometimes even ahead of the trends uh, to capitalize on that. The other thing too is they have some really great investment teams that are looking into them. Um, a very well-known American investor, John Malone, who um, does very well for himself, created a company called Liberty Investment in 2014, and he bought a 27.3% stake in Charter Communications. Um, investors that follow John Malone's lead tend to earn 30% annually. So if he is banking on a company, uh, chances are it's going to do well. One of the things that he uses as a proven plan for increases, increasing his income is the grow cash flow by aggressively buying back stock using borrowed money. Um, if they're following that process and they're following that policy, then that would exp another, be another explanation for why the acid test ratio seems so out, out of skew. Um, if they are borrowing money in order to um, buy back stock to have ready cash flow, um, it would stand that their uh, debt to equity is going to be extremely lopsided. Um, and I think that the numbers definitely showed that. Um, Charter Communications continues to put money into new trends and they are developing um, internet business and meeting increased demand for data and bandwidth. You know, people are cutting cores with strict cable programming, um, but they still want the shows. They still want the programming. They're just getting it in different ways. A lot of people are streaming uh, video and cable programming as opposed to buying a bulk package and watching it that way. Um, and, Char and Charter Communications has definitely been able to capitalize on that. Um, that being said, their quarter one 2019 earnings are showing an improved earnings over the previous year. Um, Spectrum Mobile was added at the end of 2018, and uh, in quarter one of 2019, 176,000 subscriptions were signed on strictly in the first quarter alone of this year. Um, that's up 40, or I'm sorry, 64,000 from the fourth quarter in 2018. So their Spectrum Mobile is definitely on an uptick. Um, again, the company is evolving to capitalize on new trends. Uh, a comparison of their cash flow from quarter one 2018, which showed a negative $49 million. Um, they're currently showing in, capital, in quarter one of 2019, a positive $645 million cash flow. So where they were you know, cash strapped last year, they've definitely been able to turn that around. They have um, you know, it focused on adapting their voice and their uh, packages that they're offering. Um, so they were able to capitalize on that. And, and because of their internet push, um, they've been able to mitigate any losses from video and voice departments, um, which was their original platform back when they were Formed. So one thing that I did find that was interesting is um, Charter Communications has had to deal with internal strife, uh, very much like most of the communication companies, Verizon striking um, a couple of years ago, uh, and now in 2017 in the New York City five boroughs, Charter Communications dealt with a strike as well. Um, their employees, which were members of the IE, IBEW union, uh, went out on strike. Um, what was interesting about it is that Charter didn't suffer any major hardships as a result of the strike. Uh, they hired replacement work, workers and business continued. Uh, initially, they took a hit with customer complaints, um, but even that smoothed out after the first couple of months when things got, people got into the flow of what needed to be doing. Um, last time I looked, which was just a few days ago, the strike continues and there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. But again, even with the strike, 
Um, it added color to the company on how they handle internal strife, um, but it definitely has not impacted the company in a negative manner because they were able to hire the replacement workers and just continue to work around the issue. Um, it doesn't change my mind about investing with the company because while the strike has taken place, the shareholders have not suffered as a result. So a couple of other things about the competitors that I looked at um, that I thought were of interest is that since the financial comparisons that I did at the end of the year in 2018, some things have changed. Uh, for starters, DirecTV was bought out by AT&T, and since the buyout, uh, AT&T is reporting that the Direct TV arm has lost an alarming number of subscribers, which is affecting the price and the shareholder returns. Um, the latest article about that was that um, the landslide has come to a stop and no, no additional subscribers will be vacating. Um, but there's no guarantee on that. And the numbers that were originally in favor of Direct TV uh, are definitely not going into the end of 2019. Um, Comca Comcast, on the other hand, is still maintaining in the number two spot for the communications and cable industry. Um, they seem to be a very steady, continue doing what we're good at, plotting pace. Um, and Charter Communications is reaping the benefits of the tax reform of 2017. Um, again, they did take a hit in 2018 on the financials, but as is reflected in the quarter one reporting for this year, um, they have been able to level things out and their stock is definitely look be looking better as uh, promotions have ended, the, um, the debt that they incurred for the buyout of Time Warner Cable in 2017 has now um, resolved and their numbers are starting to look really, really well. From a possible shareholder position for both Charter Communications and even Comcast, if I had $10,000 to invest, I would probably be willing to take a chance on Charter Communications simply because of the way that they're evolving in the communication system and the fact that they're constantly changing their platforms to meet, up, meet the new trends and be even a leading uh, force in how those trends go. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video presentation and have a good night.